that he didn't find to be funny. And so, uh, so I'm reading here and it says Durant's friend and former teammate Kendrick Perk Perkins told the undefeated that he felt Durant had one foot out the door during the 2018-2019 season because he didn't feel appreciated by Golden State. Someone close to Durant detailed the events that led to Durant leaving to sign with the Nets. And the most noteworthy reason played out in front of the entire world. During the Warriors Championship Parade ceremony last season, General Manager Bob Myers tried to joke about Durant's contract situation, which didn't land. Myers and Steve Kerr, who's the head coach, were uh, standing alongside television play-by-play -play man Bob Fitzgerald. I heard, he says, I heard you tell Kevin Durant he could have whatever contract he wants next year. So Myers joke, jokingly said, um, that was just for the media. He can't have anything like that at all. And then Steve Kerr, you know, basically said mid-level as a joke. Um, he says, I think that you told Steph Curry he could have any contract he wants to, Fitzgerald said. And the owner says, um, uh, well, I guess that's the owner. Let me see here. Myers, general manager. The, so the GM then says, yeah, that was different. Uh, he's been here from the from the way before days. He's earned it. Uh, so ultimately, this led to awkwardness, and uh, Fitzgerald says that's when Kevin Durant was out the door because he didn't feel appreciated. First of all, I think that's crazy to do that, right? Because Kevin Durant is an amazing player. He, he a lot of people feel that he's as good as LeBron James, and I think that um, now the the Warriors going to be on the outside looking in at um, you know arguably the best basketball player in the world, but. Putting that to the side, um, it does speak to, you know, running an organization and, and being in a boss position. Uh, one of the things I learned about sort of running a company and being a boss or even putting together a team or working together or getting a lot of people on the same page is that personalities um, can be one of the hardest things in the world to manage. You get a lot of egos. You get a lot of different agendas. Uh, you, sometimes you have people with flat out mental illness. You have some people that will come up in there and just... You know, they, they want to be the center of attention. They want to be the prima donna and you have to shut them down or boot them out. And it becomes just a big shit show. It becomes a complete mess. Um, and so, you know, a couple of things this makes me think about is one, as you build your family, build your team, uh, you know, you're, you're trying to be like the Golden State Warriors. You're trying to go out and win championships. Uh, first thing I would say is even if you're the boss. Uh, show appreciation to everybody, <laughs> everybody, you know, try to get a, a fix on, uh, you know, what matters to people, what their love language is, so to speak. Like they talk about relationships and they talk about love languages. Well, that does apply in business. You know, everybody in business has a love language. Some people want more money. Some people want more uh, accolades and attention. Some people may want more time off with their family. Some people may, may not want anything. Some people may need you to jump in their butt, to you know, kick their butt a little bit to push them forward, right? So different people respond to different stimuli, and you have to understand how different people are motivated and what it is that matters to them. <clears throat> um, also, uh, the ability to resolve conflicts is, I find, one of the most important aspects of running a business. Um, you know, the, the, if you ever want to really mess up a good situation, start fighting with each other. You know, seriously, like same thing is true with your family, your wife, your husband, uh, your kids, <clears throat> your relatives, you know, your, your basketball team, your business, you're making a movie. If you ever want to mess things up, start fighting with each other. You know, um, the mafia, uh, you know, they, they were able to maintain some degree of unity in certain families by having codes of conduct. You know, like, you know, you do not break these rules. If you break these rules, you'll be out of the organization. Uh, if there's an issue, we're going to sit down. We're going to talk about it. The Nation of Islam has codes of conduct. From what I understand, if you have an issue with your brother, you talk to him and you talk to him face to face. You don't get to chit chatting behind somebody's back and talking about rumors and all this other stuff. You talk to them and you confirm what it is you believe and you share what you're feeling so you can resolve it and work together as a team to end the conflict so you can get back to being successful together. Uh, in fact, um, I, I read books on marriage and economics are very similar. Love and economics are the same. Uh, it, they all require trust. It's a commitment. People get hurt. Uh, people get traumatized. People, they're, you know, all the all the things that apply to a love relationship apply to almost any relationship, a business relationship, etc. And so, one of the things about love is uh, they they say that couples that tend to last are the couples where when they have a conflict. They see themselves as teammates working together to battle the conflict, to get rid of the conflict. 
They don't see the other person as the adversary. They see the conflict itself as the adversary. So it's like when Denzel Washington was in the movie um, Crimson Tide, he said that the enemy of war, he was talking to Gene Hackman's character and Gene Hackman was talking about war and this is what the enemy does and you have to respond to the enemy. And Denzel said, actually, sir, uh, I don't believe that's the enemy at all. And he's like, well, who is it? Who is the enemy? Right. And he, and he says um, the enemy of war is war itself. Right now, what that means is that you're, when you get around other people, when you get around black folks and you trying to build with black folks and y'all know what I'm talking about, y'all in the same community I am and y'all know some of our people ain't quite right in the head. There's crazy white folks out there, too, but, but black people, you know, <laughs> ain't nobody like the African-American in terms of what we've gone through and, uh, and some of the trauma we've experienced and how we can traumatize the hell out of each other uh, and scare the hell out of each other. But when you are choosing your team, and choosing your squad that you're going to roll with, look for people who want to get along. Look for people who are more likely to seek out peace than they are to seek out war. Look for people who um, would rather de-escalate than to escalate. Right. An escalator is somebody who trumps you like, oh, you call me a you call me a name. I'm gonna call you a bigger name. You slap me. I'm gonna punch you. You stab me. I'm gonna shoot you. Right. That's an escalator. Like I'm gonna always go up to another level above you because I'm seeking to dominate you. And I don't care if we burn the whole house down as long as I win. You don't want that. You want a person who de-escalates, who says, OK, look, I know you're hurt. I know you're mad. Let's figure this out so we can work together and keep being successful. Because if you don't, you'll be looking like the Golden State Warriors who were winning championships last year, but they may not win another championship again. All right. That's just my two cents. Um, I think it's it's needless. Uh, it was sad that, that the Warriors lost Durant. They shouldn't have lost him. But uh, I've seen this happen a million times. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys used to have the most unstoppable football team in the in, in NFL history. One of the greatest teams in NFL history. They they went to the Super Bowl, I think, two or three times in a row, something like that, in the 90s. And then Eagles popped in. And next thing you know, the team broke up. Cowboys ain't won a Super Bowl since. Los Angeles Lakers, when they had Kobe and Shaq, top of the world. Kobe and Shaq get to bumping heads. Because of egos, everybody loses because they all go in different directions. Uh, the Chicago Bulls, you know that actually the Chicago Bulls are an example, I think, of a of a group that was actually able to make it work. And you saw what happened with the Bulls, six championships in a row. So go through your life and find a way to win championships. But do that by picking the right teammates, pick people that want to get along. And when you have a conflict, when somebody hurts you, um, you know, think about the implications of your choices. Don't engage in short-term gratification. Always see the big picture. Chess, not checkers. That's how you win in this game called life. It's my two cents. All right, guys. Um, speaking of these issues, uh, in the Black Business School, uh, if you if you like Damon Dash, for example, we have a great program called Intelligent Boss Moves, where Damon and I spend dozens of hours discussing you know uh, business and ball, being a boss and running organizations and everything from our own points of view. Uh, and so given that I'm wearing this shirt that says boss on it, feel free to go to intelligentbossmoves.com. That's intelligentbossmoves.com. I think you could try it out for 30 days or something. So it's, a, it's good. He talks about how he built Rockefeller and everything else. And I, and I come in as a finance professor and give my analysis there. Uh, also, if you want to understand how to achieve goals and how to overcome obstacles, we have a great program on that as well at blackkeystogreatness.com. That's blackkeystogreatness.com. So feel free to try that out. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit the share button, hit the subscribe button. So go out there in the world, become bosses, win championships, and I'll see you on the other side. Take care. Peace.